What's that? Oh, let's start with a joke. Um, okay. A lot of people ask me why I wear the mask. And uh, I say like, oh, it's so I can be a symbol and you know, but really it's just that I can look down at my teleprompter and no one knows that I'm doing it. <sighs> so, yeah. You wanna know who my favorite superhero is? Green Arrow. I'm just kidding. It's Spider-Man, obviously. And you wanna know the one thing that's always fascinated me about Spider-Man? His superpowers aren't all that super. Now by that, I don't mean he never does things that ordinary people couldn't do. I mean, throughout his fictional appearances, we've seen him jump off of buildings unscathed. Full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. We've seen him sustain injuries that could easily kill the average person. <laughs> and we've seen him maintain actual personal relationships despite having way too much going on in his life. Not to mention the number of times his secret identity should have been revealed but somehow wasn't. No, no, no. What I mean to say is if you take each of his powers at face value and you evaluate its physical improbability, none of them really hold a candle to some of the other soups out there. I mean, web shooting? It's just a simple liquid to solid transition. There's tons of real physical or chemical reactions that could create these same effects. Wall crawling? We've had engineers help humans climb even the smoothest walls for a while. And some humans don't even need the help. Super agility? I mean... Have you seen what Simone Biles has been up to? Never mind the millions of gymnasts and tracers around the globe who repeatedly recreate Spidey's moves. A quick disclaimer, some of them get seriously injured. Or worse. Super strength? Obviously, the strength Spidey demonstrates is simply unachievable, but there are some pretty strong people out there. Not to mention that exoskeleton innovation is continuously improving. Now, Spidey's sense is really a question mark, but given that it's not ever super well defined, you could draw a comparison to night vision or even simple motion detectors. And this is different from superheroes like Batman or Iron Man, who are supposed to be simply human, but still appear to be superhuman in some circumstances. And this is different from heroes like Captain America and Black Panther, whose only real superpower is super strength, and it's really not well defined in fiction if they are superhuman or just peak human. No, Spidey is unique. His superpowers are actually superpowers, He's got stuff coming out of his hands, and a theme song. Italian, Italian. The whole shebang. But it's not at the level of, I don't know, super speed, shooting lasers out of your eyes, or manipulating probabilities or whatever. His superpowers are a bit, I, I don't know, I don't want to say mundane, but just nowhere near as godlike as some of the other superheroes. And you wonder why this is, you know, it sort of contributes to the relatability of the character. If you look at the context of a lot of the other characters out there, Peter Parker and Miles Morales aren't so much superhumans as they are secretly above average at a few things. And I like to think we all feel like we have our thing that we can do that other people don't know about, and then one day we just drop it on them like, guess what, mother I make a mean chocolate cake and it's really impressive. Yeah, it's like that. I mean, Spider-Man is basically like a quarantine mom making sourdough, except he doesn't tell absolutely everybody about it. Now wait a minute, let me zero in on one of those powers I mentioned earlier. Yeah, web shooters. What did I say about that? It's just a simple liquid to solid transition. There's tons of real physical or chemical reactions that could create these same effects. Now hold on. Is it really that simple? I feel like I'll need my lab coat for this. Ah, alright, that's better. Now, of course, there are tons of real physical or chemical reactions that could create the effect of web shooters. I mean, nylon synthesis, melt-blown thermoplastics, solvent evaporation, to name a few. But which one is best? You guys can't tell, but I'm, I'm raising one of my eyebrows. Now, I would say, as far as what we've seen in Spider-Man fiction, web shooters have two basic uses, which I like to call grappling and catching. Now at this point you might be asking, 
Excuse me, Mr. Amazing, but what about a web shooter that doesn't use fluid? What about a simple grappling gun mounted on the wrist? To which I say, get the hell out of here. No, I'm just kidding. You can stay. For now. It's true. These web shooters, which I call solid line web shooters, are also a viable option, and many people have actually tried making them, including yours truly. These basically just consist of a simple projectile propulsion mechanism, whether it be electromagnetic or pressurized gas powered or explosive propellant powered or just spring powered with some sort of line attached. These are generally advantageous for the range they can achieve and the high tension a pre-manufactured solid line can sustain, especially if you're using something like Kevlar. In case it wasn't obvious, these web shooters are pretty much good for grappling only, unless you're including net guns in this category, which are obviously for catching but I haven't seen a wrist-mounted version. Actually, that's a good idea. I better write that down. And even when grappling, once you shoot your projectile, it's shot. What do you do then? Oh, you wanna shoot another one? Tough, you forgot to design a real system or a cartridge system, and now you're falling from the sky. Now, I've done both reels and cartridges, and I will say it's still a huge delay between shots. This is partly why I designed my conveyor belt web shooter, which is more of a proof of concept than anything else at the moment. And another thing I feel like no one brings up, not even me, is I can't hold on to this tiny line. And yes, I'm calling this tiny, you'll see why later. And if I make it any bigger, I can't store it at all. But apart from that, the main thing is that these solid line web shooters don't show the versatility we'd expect from Spidey's web shooters in fiction. That's why this video will focus on fluid web shooters from here on out. Now, while fluid web shooters have not shown the same capability for grappling as solid line web shooters have shown, the truth is the technology is closer than it's ever been. And it gets closer all the time. I mean, sure, this line is pretty weak, but it's an achievement in and of itself to just make a line out of liquid instantaneously. The fact is, fluid web shooters have the potential to be good at both grappling and catching. Now, in the vast majority of cases, a fluid web shooter will be utilizing the chemistry of polymers. Due to these specific class of chemicals relative strength and unique ability to melt and dissolve, or even the polymerization reaction itself. Now, there might be a reason for this. Spider silk in nature is technically a polymer, Polymers are long chains of molecules, and due to weaker secondary bonds between the chains, they can tangle and shape themselves to reach very specific structures, leading to very specific properties. Spider silk has the insane tensile strength and elasticity it has, not because of the amino acids in the peptide chain, but because the hydrogen bonds in the chain cause segments of the protein to form helices and spirals, leading to elasticity, and very crystalline ordered sheets, leading to strength. Now, while nature has had millions of years to evolve the structure of spider silk and make it one of the best performing materials in existence, we've had just under 60 years since Spidey came into existence to imagine a real life web fluid. So you know what, just, just cut me some slack, okay? I mean, nature had a head start. The benefit of even having the opportunity to alter properties of the fluid using chemistry cannot be understated. This means that there are potentially limitless web fluids, as opposed to choosing between a Kevlar and a polyester line at the hardware store. Oftentimes, the concept of a polymer blend may be of use. This is similar to the concept of alloying in metals to increase strength, but also to alter other properties. Mixing different polymers together may give the resulting line unique properties. Science aside, let's face it, we're all drawn to the idea of a fluid web shooter a hell of a lot more than the line web shooters. That's because it's the method actually used by Spidey in fiction. He's always talking about web fluid this, web fluid that. That mystery of how the liquid suddenly forms into a strong solid line is a fascinating question for all of us. And that's a mystery we can solve together. So let's lay out the key aspects that web shooters need to achieve. A liquid to solid transition, high velocity, and an adhesive cohesive balance. Let's start with the liquid to solid transition. We've already touched on this a bit. Web shooters don't run on diesel. This transition requires that some liquid source, easily stored and easily dispensed, turns into a solid material at the nozzle of the web shooter. If you classify the web shooter into two domains, you essentially have the inside and the outside. Such that we can say, the substance within the inside domain must be a liquid, and the substance within the outside domain must be a solid. So we can think about the different environmental properties in these domains that can make this possible. For instance, pressure, temperature, mixing states, or rheological effects. Many web shooters have utilized pressure as a useful property to differentiate between liquid and solid forms of a material, primarily through dissolution and evaporation. Many of the web shooters I presented on my channel, as well as the famous Silly String toy, use this effect. With a pressure-driven evaporation solidification process, a propellant is used that can exist in more than one phase at the ambient temperature of operation. When it is pressurized within the inside domain, it is what is known as a saturated liquid vapor mixture. Some of it is liquid, and some of it is vapor. When both of these phases are present, 
the vapor exerts a constant pressure, known as the vapor pressure, no matter what the quality or how much of each phase is present. The exertion of the vapor pressure is what allows the substance to be a propellant. The propellant exists purely as a vapor in the outside domain, when both the temperature and pressure are ambient. If some of the substance within the inside domain is able to escape to the outside domain, some of the liquid phase on the inside domain will evaporate to mix with the vapor phase, maintaining a constant vapor pressure for the inside domain. The solidification comes into play when the propellant also acts as a solvent in its liquid phase. It dissolves the other ingredients within the web shooter. To put that simply, if one of the other ingredients is a polymer, then bing bang boom, as soon as that liquid solution reaches the outside domain, then bing bang boom, that vapor evaporates away, and you're left with a big ol' solid polymer, hopefully with web-like properties. This is the method that I and others have used for the most part in the last several years, with the fluid usually involving the solvent propellant, tetrafluoroethane, and the polymer, polymethyl methacrylate. You can check many, many tutorials for that stuff on my channel, but people still ask. Temperature is a property I've seen applied in two basic ways, both of which also require phase transitions. The first way is still evaporation, only this time it's temperature driven. Say you still have that liquid solution of a polymer on the inside domain, except the solvent is no longer a propellant, it can only exist in its liquid phase at ambient temperature. If you don't add some sort of temperature change to the outside domain, then that solvent is never going to evaporate and you're just going to end up with a weird squirt gun. But if you're able to heat the outside domain above the solvent's boiling point, then that solid polymer is going to be left behind in all its web-like glory. Now, when comparing the two methods of evaporation, they each have their advantages and disadvantages. Firstly, propellant evaporation is passive. It requires no power source. It's simply a system trying to reach equilibrium. The heated evaporation, well, <laughs> that heat has to come from somewhere, whether it be resistance heating, a heat pump, a gasoline engine, something that actively introduces energy into the system. On the other hand, propellants that have required properties are almost overwhelmingly volatile organic compounds that are harmful to the environment or to the human body. There are a few chemicals where you can skirt around the environmental issue, but it's still an issue. With heated evaporation, your solvent could be arguably anything, as everything has a boiling point. It could be water, for instance, which is pretty much harmless, and there are water-soluble polymers. Now, apart from evaporation, temperature can be employed in another way that I haven't seen until recently. In this case, the liquid to solid transition is a process many of us are already familiar with. Freezing. Not as in like involving ice, as in the opposite of melting. So you have a polymer that's solid at room temperature. How do you store it as a liquid? You melt it down and store it at high temperature. Thus the outside domain being colder allows the web fluid to solidify. This is something I've only seen from a channel called Joel Creates with his hot glue web shooter. However, I can only imagine the amount of power that is required to store a whole tank of molten thermoplastic, and I left a comment asking Joel if this is a problem, but he didn't reply. Now, what about mixing? This generally involves chemical polymerization reactions, which is the forming of bonds between molecules to form polymer chains. Two chemicals mixing can usually be enough to introduce this reaction, though some happen quicker than others. I mean, I love quick curing epoxy as much as the next guy, but five minutes for a web shooter to become a web is enough time for the lizard to bite your head off. I want to add a disclaimer here, as I am about to talk about dangerous chemicals, so please don't close the video after I mention something cool and go try it yourself. You might end up severely hurt in the most horrible ways if you don't take the proper precautions. A quicker polymerization that a lot of people have brought to my attention, and yes guys, I am aware of it, and if I see it in my comments again, I swear I will just... Yes, I am talking about nylon synthesis. Now, nylon is one of the strongest polymers out there, and it's usually synthesized with two chemicals mixing. One is adipoyl chloride and one is hexamethylene diamine. Gosh, that's a mouthful. These two chemicals are commonly positioned at different layers in a container, with the boundary between them forming nylon, which is continually drawn or spun out of the solution and collected as a fiber. So these chemicals aren't some that you would mix like you would epoxy, but I would be interested to see what would happen if you synthesize nylon through a static mixer. What would come out the other end? This definitely has to be tested in a proper laboratory because both adipoyl chloride and hexamethylene diamine are dangerous as shit, pardon my French. 
I'm talking serious burns and severe irritation dangers as French, and that's not something I think anybody wants. So if you're not a chemist with adequate protection and ventilation like this dude, don't experiment with this, and definitely don't go shooting dangerous chemicals at high velocities, and definitely don't do it in public. Other fast methods of chemical solidification don't seem to be so much polymerization reactions as they are cross-linking reactions, where polymer chains already exist, but they are in liquid form, either in solution or they just exist in a liquid state at room temperature. Examples include the classic slime experiment, where borax is added to polyvinyl acetate glue and the polymer chains are cross-linked. Recently, another spidery inventor, the human spider and I, looked into a process that is used to make artificial caviar, called spherification. This involves introducing an aqueous solution of sodium alginate to calcium ions, which replace the sodium ions, creating bonds between alginate chains. Keep in mind these cross-linking bonds are not covalent, so they are easier to break, and they are easier to break than the covalent bonds in epoxy or nylon. All of these chemical mixing procedures now require an additional domain for the web shooter. The outside is the same, but you now require two insides if you want to call them A and B, where the two parts that need to be mixed are kept separately. Only just before they reach the outside should the contents of A and B be mixed, so that the web shooter doesn't clog up with polymerized or cross-linked material. Now this is obviously a disadvantage, as it requires additional hardware, two canisters, two valves, and possibly more, making for a bigger web shooter. That brings us to relogical effects, which can be interesting, but the web spinning applications presented here are highly theoretical. Now, rheology is the study of the flow of matter, but the term is usually applied to fluid studies. This includes concepts like viscosity, which we colloquially describe as a liquid being thicker or thinner. Viscosity is a constant for what are known as Newtonian fluids, because they follow Newton's law of viscosity. That viscosity is the ratio of the shear stress applied to, on a fluid to the amount that its velocity changes over the direction perpendicular to the velocity, which basically tells you how much the fluid is responding to the applied stress. If the velocity changes a lot as a result of the applied stress, then the fluid has low viscosity. If you're trying to get liquid to flow or stir and you're applying a lot of stress but nothing much is happening, then the fluid by both mathematical and logical reasoning has a high viscosity. Viscosity can also be understood as the internal friction of a fluid, when the molecules have a hard time slipping past each other. Only some fluids are actually truly Newtonian, like water for instance, but most can be approximated as such. For non-Newtonian fluids whose mathematical laws I won't go over here, viscosity is not constant. Either the viscosity increases when more stress is applied, or it decreases when more stress is applied. These two basic types of non-Newtonian fluids are called shear thickening and shear thinning fluids respectively, for both the type of stress that the fluids experience and for the effect that the stress has on the viscosity. Some shear thickening fluids exhibit this property so dramatically such that they act as a solid when external forces are applied to the surface of the fluid, like with the classic mixture of corn starch and water. The opposite effect can be described for shear thinning fluids like ketchup, when the fluid won't even budge until some sort of external stress is applied, like tapping or, or shaking. Of course, you could never really tell how solid the fluid is within the container when no stress is applied, as measuring that would, would require applying some kind of stress. So that's interesting. So basically, the two domains of the web shooter, the inside and the outside, could be characterized by the type of stress the fluid is experiencing. And you want the web fluid to act a liquid on the inside and to act solid on the outside. Now, I've done this briefly many years ago with a safe shear thinning fluid composed of xanthan gum and water that was able to shoot out as if it were water, but was also able to adhere to the side of a surface without dripping all the way to the bottom, as if it had solidified. Now, of course, it's easy to doubt the practical applications of something like that, but the only alternative at this point is shear thickening fluid, and you couldn't build a web out of that because it's probably gonna be liquid when stationary, and you couldn't shoot it out as the shear stress applied to the fluid during propulsion would solidify it before it even left the shooter. So neither is really something that you want to take with you when you're crime fighting. But just imagine for a second, a fluid that acts solid when tensile stress is applied, as opposed to shear stress. Now, I'm not really an expert in this area, but I know this is a very strange idea, as I've never heard of fluids experiencing tensile stress, as the molecules only have trouble sliding past each other, they aren't really difficult to separate from one another. That's like solid stick. But if it were possible, it could potentially be something that you could hang from and shoot out of a nozzle. Basically, you need some type of matter that doesn't really exist, a fluid that basically acts as though it knows exactly what you want it to do. So finally, we have our sort of insane multi-dimensional pro and con list for liquid to solid transition approaches. 
as you can see, there are more cons than pros in all approaches, but I don't know, maybe I just designed it like that to make a point. I guess I'm a pessimist. Well, let me know in the comments if you think one of these cons isn't actually a big deal, and maybe I'll turn my mood around. Also, please let me know if there's an approach that you think has not been covered here, and I'll be sure to check it out and discuss it in a future video. Now, this is part one of three for a complete must-watch guide, if you want to call it that. And trust me, we've only scratched the surface. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at the.amazing.labs, and to check out my Patreon, my Spreadshirt shop, and my Discord server, the links for which are in the description. Just a reminder that a contribution on my Patreon or a purchase of a nice hoodie on my Spreadshirt shop means that I get some funding for the ultimate spider community laboratory, Dragline Dynamics where we will begin to solve some of the scientific problems I presented in this video. This laboratory will be the ultimate step towards creating real web shooters, as you can't do science alone. It'll be like the nice version of Oscorp. Hello? Who's there? No, no, please. The amount of math required to understand the answers is too much for how philosophically unexciting the questions are. No! No, but seriously, I mean, fluid dynamics is awesome. And if you don't think so, then you'll never make a great web shooter. I'm sorry. Next time we'll get into all of that to ensure our web shooter is as powerful as possible. And please, leave a like. Motivate me. Ask me questions in the comments below about the concepts I've explored, and please challenge my assertions. In my quest to do good science, I'll be sure to correct myself in the next video. That's all for now. Stay amazing, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.